In case you didn't know, my name is Kerry Wolf. I run a WordPress development agency called WP Wolf Press. And I'm really excited to share some stuff with you tonight, to this evening, this afternoon, that is um, kind of, it's pretty new, and some of it is actually not even out yet. And it has to do with the, our ability to personalize our websites on a customer by customer by customer basis. So, as is the norm, we'll talk, uh, I guess, a little bit about me. Um, that's the home team, me and my wife, my lovely wife. Uh, we don't have any children, but uh, we do have a chief security officer named Sophie. <laughs> so that she makes sure that all the, that uh, everything's handled security-wise at, at the house. Um, I work from home. I've uh, been building websites since 1995 um, and did that till about 2002 and then I founded Imagenis Design Works which was a... Can you speak up a little bit? Sure. Um, founded Imagenis, Imagenesis Design Works which was sort of an all-purpose design agency. We did websites, we did graphics, we did logos, we did everything. and. Um, in 2012, I discovered WordPress, um, found that I could do so much more, and I decided to focus on that, and rebranded as, as WP WordPress in 2017, and we do exclusively just WordPress-related material. And our current sort of motto, if you will, is in everything we do, we believe everyone deserves to be listened to and treated like a real human person, thus providing a uniquely remarkable, personalized customer experience. Those last four words you're going to hear a lot today. What we'll cover, we'll cover, we'll cover why we're here today, brief history of personalization, what is personalization done right, why should you care, how can you get started today, how do we do this? How can personalization impact your business? And then, how can you sell this to your customers? This is how I got here today. <laughs> um, a couple of months ago, I was at Walmart. That's where we shop. And it's kind of, you know, we, we're all, sounds with the chuckle I get that everybody has had this experience. And, you know, you're thinking, this, they just don't care. They treat us like cattle. And, uh, and it's, you know, and, and they can say, well, go shop somewhere else. It's, we're the cheapest. And so people do it. But it makes you feel like you just don't matter. And that's not a good feeling. We also have this experience. <laughs> Interminably put on hold. Um, Go to the doctor's office. Wait, you have an appointment at one o'clock. You don't get seen till four. Mm -hmm. I've often been tempted to send them a bill for my time, three hours of my time at what I bill at for that waste of time. So this is the way that we've come to be used to be treated, and we're just treated like a nameless entity instead of a human person. We're treated like a prospect an email address, a phone number, a demographic. But one size does not fit all, although they try. I'm a tall person. I can't go to Kohl's and buy large shirts because the sleeves come to here. So, um, but we've been trained to, to, to believe this. And it's through this mass marketing that we've kind of evolved into We have average projects, products for average people, and the products are designed to be average. Because if you want to market to mass markets, you have to find something the masses want, and that's average. But we don't want to feel average. We want to feel different, special, um, paid attention to. But we've been trained to accept this. 
for 100 years. Henry Ford famously said, any customer can have a car painted any color he wants, so long as it's black. And if you don't fit into this box, we can't help you. So the thing is, if we're selling to everybody, we're selling to nobody. So it's time for a change. Karen, Kathy Sierra said years ago, when it comes to f your features and even your benefits, one size does not fit all. Try to find ways to connect what you, what you do have to what each individual finds personally meaningful. And then we're going to go to the, what I call the dawn of personalization. Does anybody know who Howard Mar Moskowitz is? Howard Moskowitz, I'll let you read that. Um, he was a research marketer, and he was hired by Campbell Soup Company because they had a problem. They had a, a, a pasta sauce that they made, it's called uh, Prego, and they were trying to compete with ragu, and they were getting killed by ragu, and they said, we came to this guy, we got to figure out how to make something better. So we need you to do some market research and find out what people want. So he sent, uh, he did all kinds of surveys all over the country. He bust in truckloads of people and put 10 bowls of pasta sauce out with different kinds of sauce, 40 something different kinds of sauces. You know, spicy, sweet, plain, chunky, uh, salty, garlicky, all different kinds. And he discovered well, when we looked at the data, usually they were expecting a nice bell curve. But that was a mess. The data was a mess. It was all over the place. But he did recognize that they fell into three clusters. They fell into their, uh, those are those who like pasta sauce plain. There are those who like it chunky. And those that like it spicy. And at that time, no one made chunky spi uh, pizza sauce or pasta sauce. So they started making chunky pasta sauce. Took over 30% of the market, made $600 million. So that was the beginning of the personalization of sort of segmenting the market. As it said in here, he's known for horizontal segmentation. But being Americans, Anything worth doing is worth overdoing. And this is what we have today. I, every Christmas, make a chocolate caramel cheesecake. And it requires an Oreo, Oreo cookie crust. So I go to Walmart and I try to get Oreo cookies. Plain Oreo cookies. You ever tried to find plain Oreo cookies? Um, this is a, sh a shot just a week or two ago from my local Walmart of the Oreo cookie section. And I couldn't get it all in. I didn't have a wide angle lens. But that part in the circle, those are the regular Oreo. But they have 121 choices of Oreo cookies. They have 262 choices of ranch dressing. First I said, well, what, how many dressings? But it was over 1,000, and so I didn't stop counting. 121 different variations of Coca-Cola. 137 variations of Keurig cups. Wow. Choice. It isn't all it's cracked up to be. Because there's the paradox of choice. Choice has made us not freer, but more paralyzed. Not happier, but more dissatisfied. It produ produces a paralysis rather than a liberation. With so many options to choose from, we find it difficult to choose. You experience dissatisfaction. If you overcome the paralysis and make a choice, you end up less satisfied because of the result of the choice that we would have made if we have had fewer options to choose from. And then this is the, the, the most important one, the escalation of expectations. When there are so many choices, one should be perfect. But when we get good, or we get great, we're disappointed because it's not perfect. And I've had that experience. I recently repainted my office. And you ever go to Lowe's or Home Depot, 
to pick a paint chip. There's millions. And so you try to, oh, well, let's go in a bluish gray area. So now it's only 100. So then you go and you pick it. So we painted the room, and, that, and then when you look at it, I said, I don't like it. But, you know, I'm not going to repaint the room, so. <laughs> so what is personalization done right? It's listening to your customers and having a relevant conversation. It's knowing and responding to the person, not to the email address. It's a change of mindset. A lead is a person, not an email address, with a problem. And you are there to solve it. It's about developing human relationships with your customers, your customers feeling well understood, feeling well understood, your customers feeling you care about them. Personalization is the pathway to remarkable. I told you we'd come up on remarkable again. Remarkable is surprising and delighting a customer by exceeding their expectations and creating a positive emotional reaction that compels them to tell others about their experience. You ever had that, you ever had that happen? Where somebody gives you just such a great experience that you just got to go out and tell your friends? That's remarkable. Um, and that's invaluable. That's common parlance is word of mouth. But what's all this talk about feelings? Why does it matter? Anybody ever seen the talk by Simon Sinek? It's, um, it's about finding your why, or that kind of stuff. He talks about this. He talks about the limbic brain. Limbic brain is responsible for all our feelings, like loyalty and trust. It's responsible for all human behavior, all decision making, and it has no capacity for language. It's where our gut decisions come from. You ever had a thing where somebody giggles and comes to you and they say, well, it just doesn't feel right. You know, the, it, it, you know all, on paper it looks good, but it just doesn't feel right. Well, we're not talking to the right person inside. We're talking to the up here. We're not talking in there. So we've got to make the person feel like they're being understood and they're being heard, they're being listened to. So how can we listen? Well, and this is on, now we're talking into the, dealing with the website. We pay attention to how they found your website. You do a Google search, what were they searching for? Facebook ad, link from other sites. Where did they land on your website? If they landed on your website about web design, maybe they're interested in web design. What pages and posts did they view? Maybe they went back to multiple pages more than one time. Maybe that shows that they're interested in that. You can ask them questions. You can have those little pop-up toasters that say, what kind of business do you have? What stage is, are you at in your business? How can I best serve you? What are the biggest challenges you're having in your business today? You, you can ask. They don't have to answer, but you can ask. If you get 5 10% of people answering, you're making some headway. Why should you care? 71% of customers get frustrated with impersonal shopping experiences. 67% of customers have unsubscribed from lists because e emails will, were irrelevant. I get emails from people that I don't know who the hell they are. Or I buy stuff from my wife at Christmas from some obscure jewelry company, and then for the next two years I get emails from them. So I have to delete them. 44% of customers are likely to become repeat buyers after a personalized shopping experience. Very important. Personalization is good for the customer. <coughs> Conversations are more relevant. What you have to say to them means something to them. They feel better understood. They feel like this, this company or this person, they get me. They create more meaningful relationships. And this is very valuable because when, there's always going to be somebody that's going to be try to, uh, I'm sure what the term to think uses, they're going to try to poach your customers. But if they have a relationship with you, even if the other people come in cheaper, they're going to say, no, I think I'm going to stay with so-and-so. 
And that's a d decision being made by the limbic brain. It feels right because of their experience with you. And it creates a remarkable customer experience. It's good for you as the, as the web developer um, because now you have more engaged customers. They listen to what you have to say. You have earned credibility. They're more likely to buy from you. You have continued nurturing. They buy again and again and again. Lifetime value of a customer goes up high. And they become your evangelist. They become your tribe. And tribes are very loyal. I promise you. This is not what personalization is. It was, it's what it used to be. It's what they used to tout. Well, we, can, you know, we can put their first name right at the top of the email. That's pretty fancy. That's not what personalization is about. And it's not about this. It's not about spying on people or following them around the internet. It's not about being creepy. Just to make that clear. So how do you get started? Well, we start with personographs. Um, when it comes to benefits, you offer one size doesn't fit all. So we like personographs because they help us put a story on top of the sales process. Now, a lot of times you've heard of personas, but if you take a persona and put a story with it, you have a personograph, like a biography. And the, the story that we're talking about is the story that the customer tells themselves about themselves. Um, and that's how they get the feeling that you understand them. And to start out, uh, based on, you can do the starter personographs based on existing clients that you know, clients you think you might like to attract. Uh, build out a couple of personographs to start with, just two, a man and a woman. Um, if you've already developed personographs, great. This will help you get a great start. Here's a couple of starter personographs, completely made up, but sort of, sort of based on past experiences. Um, and we kind of pick out some things that might be helpful to how to interact with them. And um, so particularly paying attention to needs and goals. Now, what we're going to be talking about tonight, or this afternoon, is going to require some tools. It's going to require an email service provider. And what email service provider, I'm not really talking something like constant contact or uh, other, they just send emails. These are more robust email automation type platforms. CRM. Well, not, some, some call themselves sort of a CRM, um, but, um, but the most popular ones and the, wor the ones that um, work best probably for this would be ConvertKit, Drip, Active Campaign. Um, uh, those are the top ones that seem to work best with it and I, I'm familiar with. Um, and then this, the, the secret sauce is this new product called Write Message. Um, it's been out about a year. Carrie? Yes, ma'am. Are those email providers paid providers? Do you mean do they cost? Right. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And there's varying degrees of, of um, cost depending on what, what you need. Um, you can begin by gathering anonymous data with right message. You can get the Google search and the pages customers landed on. So I searched on, um, I search on res recipes for uh, mozzarella pizza. And maybe you have a site that has recipes for mozzarella pizza. And it lands on your page. That information is recorded. We haven't assigned it to a person yet, but it's recorded. Facebook ad clicks. The, what, in, what was the ad promoting? Page customers, uh, what pages customers navigate to mul multiple times. Like, like keep coming back to the pricing page. You know, what's that about? Are they having some trouble figuring out the price? You know, are they mm, about the price? Um, blog posts they keep reading, uh, or a type of blog post. Maybe they're reading blog posts 
on, um, on content marketing. You know, you can see it, begin to see a theme in there. And then, of course, those uh, mentioned those toaster pop-up surveys and questions and responses. But each one of these, these, these actions applies a tag or a custom field to their record that will be later applied to the email, email service provider. Now, there's a difference between tags and custom fields. Tags are, are things people do. They tend to be binary. They're either a subscriber or they're not. A custom field is, it's like you can have a custom field of status. What is their status? Well, that can change. You know, they could be at the beginning and they could be a lead. And then after you move them through your funnel, they may become a warm lead. And then they may become a customer. Uh, or they, then they may ask for a refund and they're a former customer. But that their, their status can change. So it's important when you're setting all this stuff up to take those into account that they that should be treated differently. Then you continue gathering data. Once they sign up for your lead magnet, your blog post, or your newsletter email list, in other words, once you get their email address, all that other stuff that we've talked about that it was, it was keeping track of is associated with their email address. And it's put into the email servicing provider. And it's done with cookies. Uh, then you can engage with customers further through personalized relevant emails and gather more data through trigger links. These, trigger, these links down here, when they um, click on those, you know, they're answering a question, but it's also putting a tag in the, in the service provider saying that what, what stage are they looking for or are they looking for a job. And we continue gathering data. As they further engage with your website and emails, you can develop a very specific personograph and help further uncover problems and help them know, help you know how you can best help them. In other words, they are better understood. They feel better understood. They feel like you're the only one that understands them and you're the only one that has the answer. Over time, you can develop a granular picture of what your customer's needs are and build new products and tweak existing products to their needs. Now, there's different kinds of personalizations of how you can uh, change a website. And what we're talking about here is modifying a website on the fly based on the data we have on that particular customer. Not a segment, that person. Like, you go to a home page, you might see a version, and you go to that same home page, and you might see a different version because it's tailored specifically for you. So, we can do uh, add new sections within pages, create, uh, we can change, move, swap out existing page content, we can change pictures, we can move things from one side to the other, um, and as I mentioned before, we can adapt the home page to reflect the visitor's readiness and specific needs. Now, after all this data we've gathered, we can have a progressively learned personograph. And this is what we're aiming for. That we have a personograph of everyone on your list that shows who they are and what they need. And these are three imaginary, or not so imaginary, some of the names have been changed to protect the innocent. Um, we have Roger, who's a professional speaker, Allison, a marketer, and Mike, who's a life coach. So, let's say they, you know, if you come to my homepage, that's pretty much what it looks like above the fold. But, if Mike goes to that homepage, it's, it's different. Notice how it's different. It specifically addresses life coaches, and it addresses what's his, what's his uh, main goal, long-term client base, a loyal client base. And then the very last part, it uh, adds a sort of a aspirational place that they could be. That is, are your customers 
experiences so remarkable that they want you to lead them to success. Then we go on to Allison, specific to online marketers. Help her close more deals. Wait, that's, that was what her main goal was. How'd that happen? Is it magic? You know, Arthur C. Clarke once said, sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. This is, we got it going on here. Um, and then, of course, we can change their aspirational desire. And then, of course, there's Roger. He wants more speaking gigs, and he'd love it if people would be begging him to speak at their events. So these are things that we can do. But how do we do it? Now, what I'm going to show you here is kind of a combination of how we do that, what I just showed you, but what's coming down the pike. Because I'm a beta tester for the software. And um, this is called a call to action widget. So this is on, this would be on a uh, website development page. And then you'll see this little pop-up toaster that comes up that asks about what industry they're in. And you can barely see it here, but coaching is slightly darker because it's been clicked. So they click, they're in the, they're in the coaching industry. And it asks what role they are. They're the owner. Okay, so now they get a, they get a, a free ebook talking about um, how to develop a remarkable website project. So they click on get their the ebook, they click on send me my, my stuff, and then they get their, their stuff. Now, this is what the landing page looked like before. With this, uh, this widget I just showed you, all that data it collected on the fly, when they went to that landing page, or that particular person, the owner of a consulting business, they will, will go ahead and that's what they'd see. But how do we get there? We'll go back some here. In the, what we're going to show you now is the inside of right message. We can go in, is the one not working? Oh. Okay. Y'all hear me now? That makes noise. Hello, hello. Okay. Okay. Um, see up in the little red part? There's this free guide. We are in the interface now to where we're editing. So we're going to edit that. And you'll see up, up uh, uh, where we got here. See where it says consulting? We're editing the consulting consult, uh, segment. So we're going to change it to say free guide for consultants. And this will pop up on the right, is what's doing it. Then we're going to edit for the owner segment. And we're going to edit this area down here. And this is how we do it, using this little dookie. And then we've changed it to that. So now, there's what the page normally looks like. And if somebody fills out that form, and they are a owner of a consulting business, that's what they see. They see free guide for consultants, a remarkable website project, whoops, is a collaboration between business owner and designer. These are just some simple examples of how it can be used. Now, all that stuff being said, all this data is recorded in the email service provider. As we can see here, their industry, this is a custom field, it's consulting, role, owner, they've added a tag for the project, and then in this particular, we're talking about websites mostly here, but this also dumps them into an automation. And, uh, and this, is in, this is an active campaign automation. If they're already a customer, let's see, if they're already a customer, 
they just come down here and get the email and say thank you and here's your download. If they're not a customer, they go through this nurture sequence that goes over a period of about a week where they get emails that go over all the, the different be the benefits and so on and so forth until they get a sort of a, hey, you want to buy type email. <laughs> so, so this is how, how that works. Um, can, how can personalization impact your business? Well, case study, some of you may be familiar with Pat Flynn. He's very popular, very successful. He did a, he implemented um, this tool um, last Christmas. And um, back then it was, this is, um, this is one of those toaster widgets. And he actually had, I think, five questions he asked. But by implementing this and gaining more information about his customers, during his, um, Black, his Cyber Monday sale, he increased his sales by 138, 138%. He raised, he raised another, or earned another $104,000 in revenue just by doing this. And there's innumerable case studies that, uh, like this that bring this up. So how do you sell it? When customers, when you go out and have to sell in person, you got to make a call, do the whole dog and pony show. That takes time, takes money. Um, for me, I don't know about you, but time is the most valuable thing to have. Imagine doing that a thousand times. Go out and do it a thousand times. And then have your website do it a thousand times for you. That's a lot of time, time savings. Um, but when you're going through, when, you're work, when you go do it yourself, you're profiling a person. You're asking, you're learning about them. You can see how they act. They can kind of get a sense of who they are. Well, the website can do that for you. Um, but without the right tools, when you're online, you're forced to come up with the lowest common denominator, copy and messaging. You're going for average. You're selling to everybody. And when you're selling to everybody, you're selling to nobody. Another way to sell it's the future benefit. Retailers like Amazon and other companies are already doing this kind of thing, but they're doing it on a huge scale with artificial intelligence, and they get creepy. Um, <laughs> if I look at a book on Amazon, it follows me all over the internet. Um, um, this used to require a lot of custom engineering. Now it's achieve achievable via off-the-shelf software with right message. I uh, was looking at a, a report a couple months ago that uh, Adobe has a product called Adobe Experience Manager that does a lot of this kind of stuff. It doesn't do it with WordPress, but it does a lot of this kind of stuff. And the starting, starting the, the range of cost is between $250,000 and a million dollars. This doesn't cost $250,000 or a million dollars. Um, I think right message is like $50, $60 a month. And then, to me, whoops, back. Well, I'm losing myself here. Here we go. To me, this is key. The future is personal. The future is personal. I don't know what I, that says it the best. Another way you can sell is the awareness benefit. By doing all this um, gathering data, you're doing end source marketing. You're better understanding who and what you're engaging with. Of course, we talked about Pat Flynn. And by better understanding your audience, you increase loyalty and engagement, and you're able to make your content more relevant. And then I mentioned this. Just don't forget the personal touch. And this is a personal story. I used, to, well, I used to live in California, and I was married before. And when my first wife was going for a new job, she went to Nordstrom's. And this is before Nordstr Nordstrom's used to be up in North, like in Seattle or somewhere. And they had come down to California, and they were eating Macy's lunch. And uh, so she went to Nordstrom's, and they assigned her a personal shopper <coughs> that sat down with her and said, "Okay, what kind of clothes do you like? And tell me about this job you're going for. And you know, what kind of budget do you have? What colors do you like? And all that kind of stuff." 
and then Beth went home, came back a week later, and this lady had all these outfits hanging up with the shoes and the bags, everything matching and everything. And so she picked one out and, went, and she went to the job interview. She got the job. When that personal shopper found out, she sent her a congratulatory bouquet of flowers. That is a personal touch. And we can do small things. That's a, I don't know if I can afford to send a bouquet of flowers to everybody every day, but that's a, that's a nice touch. Just send a thank you card. Because when you surprise and delight your customers in very personal ways, you keep them coming back. So I challenge you. I dare you to be remarkable. And uh, that's about all I got. There's some links at the end of this that refer to some of the stuff I've talked about. Um, that um, if you copy, uh, that might be hard to do with that one at the top. The slides are that that available at that top URL. Uh, it's a bit.ly URL, 2-U-W-I-P-Q-X. Um, I don't know if it's weird. So, any questions? <laughs>